Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So they're going to be looking at the 2018 Senate elections as of Saturday, September 15th, 2018. So I pretty much cleared all of the states that are not currently rated as safe for either political party according to 270 to win, which gives the Republicans 45 seats and the Democrats 37 seats. So I will be going through going through polling data and the 538 forecast for a number of these races and pretty much giving you an overall conclusion as to who would control the, the Senate at the end of 2018. So on your screen right now is the former prediction that I had in the beginning of September. Uh, Arizona actually was red, but it was altered to being blue a couple days later after further analyzing the race itself. But pretty much it finishes off at a 50-50 tie between Republicans and Democrats. Overall, the Democrats gaining one seat uh, in total. And if you look at the current composition in the 2019 Senate, according to that map, again, the Democrats at 50 and the Republicans at 50, with the GOP retaining the majority because of Vice President Mike Pence. As for this map, it may not be as lenient towards the Democratic Party. There are a number of states that have since withdrawn away from their Democratic candidates and pushed up their GOP candidates mainly because the primaries are over. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of infighting, especially in a number of these Republican states. That yes, they may not be too inclined to vote for these GOP candidates, but after the primaries, they have no one else to turn to but this certain GOP candidate, which is why uh, it really helps the Republicans' numbers in a number of these Demo uh, these Republican states, uh, which is why states like Tennessee or Arizona uh, are starting to have a little bit more of a. Uh, push for uh, GOP candidates. They are getting a lot more support than what they had before. For Tennessee, exam uh, for example, Phil Bredesen led by 10% at one point in time. Uh, now he is behind in polling data. And that was mainly because there were a number of undecided voters, probably because of the primaries and because these are states that are pretty Republican. Don't expect too many Democrats to be wavering away from the Democratic Party, considering the majority of voters there are Republicans. So we start off on the map with 45 Republicans and 37 Democrats. And there are some states that are going to be considered likely for the Democratic Party at this point in time. The Minnesota special election, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey was arguably a little bit more contested than before, but still, I think that one will go into the likely column at the end of 2018. Same thing in the state of Ohio. That's pretty interesting seeing Ohio become uh, a likely Democratic state, but Sherrod Brown is leading by 15% in uh, statewide polls. As for the state of Montana, uh, that one I'm actually going to be moving from the leaning Democratic column in this prediction over into the likely column. 538 also has Montana in the likely Democratic column, and to be honest with you, it does make sense. John Tester is pretty popular compared to other Democratic senators that are up in 2018, and he's not really wavering that much in polling. He's consistently led, even though there are very few polls that were taken. Uh, it is a state like Montana. He was elected against a Republican incumbent in 2006, re-elected in 2012, and then now will likely go on for re-election to win re-election in 2018, which is why I'm comfortable enough putting that state in the likely column for the Democratic Party. So we're around an even playing field with 44 Democrats and 45 Republicans, but again, like there were a likely Democratic seats are also likely Republican seats. The first one, Mississippi special election, that one I did characterize as a likely seat back in my other prediction, but here's a state moving from safe to likely for the GOP. The state of Nebraska, uh, 538 predicts will be within a 10% margin. That is considerable. Nebraska is a very Republican state, but also it currently approves of the president by positive 4%. That is not a good number in a very conservative state. Donald Trump has a higher approval rating in states like Texas or Georgia or Alabama, which Alabama is expected, but still around the general area, around in some areas where pre the president may not be doing the best or didn't do as good as he did in Nebraska, he has a higher approval rating in. So that's something to note. Um, it could be the candidates themselves, but the Democrats definitely are doing a little bit better. I will be coming out with the best Democrats and Republicans can do in the 2018 Senate, 2018 governor elections uh, tomorrow. So that'll be four separate videos, but... You should stay tuned for those because um, I will discuss Nebraska in that video for both political parties. So Nebraska moving from safe red to likely Republican. And uh, there is a possibility for a Democrat to win here, according to 538. It's a very slim chance, but uh, the highest the Democrat can get is a pretty much exact tie with just a narrow edge out in terms of hundreds of votes. Uh, that puts Republicans at 47 seats, the Democrats at 44 finishes off our likely ratings for either political party. And now we have a total of nine contested races. We're going to start off with the state of Texas. This is a race I previously had characterized as a leaning Republican state, and that's also what I'm going to characterize it at this point in time. Ted Cruz leads by 3.2%. I do think that this race definitely could change leading up into 2018, but we are 52 days away from the general election, and not much a drastic there can't be as drastic as a change as there was in 2016 because these are Senate elections this is not something that has national implications uh, in terms of candidates they're not going to release an attack ad nationwide over Ted Cruz from the Democratic Party so when it comes down to a couple of these races I really think that these numbers are starting to solidify and these bases are starting to form but the most recent poll in Texas shows Ted Cruz winning by a mere one percent 
I do not expect it to be in the tilt column for Ted Cruz, but I think it could get there if uh, Beto O'Rourke does play his cards right. But overall, that race goes into the leaning Republican column. As for the state of Tennessee, I do want to come back to this one because I'm very contested about it. Uh, Emerson took a poll back in July, Bredesen plus six, but then an August poll from Gravis showed Blackburn plus four. NBC comes out with a poll late August showing Bredesen ahead by 2%, and Fox News with the most recent poll plus 3% for Marsha Blackburn. So a very contested race in the state of Tennessee. We will come back to it. As for North Dakota, this one I'm actually going to move from the tilt Republican column to the leaning Republican column. As you can see on this map, here it was the tilt Republican column, now going into the leaning column for the mere reason that a new poll came out of the state of North Dakota and more fundraising information. Uh, Fox News came out with a poll that shows Kevin Kramer with 48% and Heidi Heitkamp at 44%. An exact copy of the Mason-Dixon poll taken back in June, which was the same characterization, uh, same reasoning why this state would be in the tilt Republican column, but a poll before that taken in Gravis, taken by Gravis in February shows Height Camp ahead by three percent. Uh, again, very long time ago. Um, Kevin Kramer currently leads by one point six percent on average, but still around a four percent lead for Kevin Kramer uh, in recent data. Yes, Heidi Height Camp did defeat a an incumbent Republican representative from uh, North Dakota in two thousand twelve and did overestimate polling. Uh, sorry, did overperform what polling said she would, but still at this point in time, North Dakota will move into the leaning Republican column outside that one percent. A true margin of error. As for the state of Nevada, a new poll from Suffolk shows uh, Jackie Rosen ahead by 1%. So uh, Nevada is not really changing. Before, it was rated as a tilt Democratic state, and it is now rated as a tilt Democratic state. Not much changes in that state. Not much really to talk about either in a state like that, even though there is a Republican incumbent in a Clinton state. We did discuss Montana overall, Chester plus 5.5% in terms of polling. As for the Missouri Senate race, we have uh, there are three new polls out. I have no idea whether or not the Fox News one has changed or not, but before, it showed uh, Claire McCaskill leading by 3%, and now it shows a tie, but still, a tie is never good for an incumbent, but I do believe Claire McCaskill could narrowly edge out Josh Hawley at the end of 2018. She has gotten extremely lucky with all of her Senate candidates before, and including this one, um, so I'm not going to put it past her to win this election by a very narrow margin. I'm not going to say that it's going to be safe for either political party, for obvious reasons. These races are going to become very contested very fast, and they already are. Uh, but at this point in time, I do think Missouri could narrowly land in the Democratic column, again, by a very, very narrow margin, less than 1% against Josh Hawley. So we have another state to discuss, and that is the state of Indiana. So a new poll from Fox News shows Mike Brown leading by 2%, but it also conflicts with the NBC poll that shows Donnelly ahead by 6%, both of which were taken after the primaries. So there isn't too much um, data that could really conflict between the two. There's nothing really that's drastically changed between the times these polls were taken between August 29th and September 9th, September 8th. Uh, overall, Indiana is still going to remain in the tilt to Democratic column. We aren't going to change that one into a pure toss-up because I don't really like doing pure toss-ups in the Senate maps, uh, but Indiana goes into the tilt Democratic column, the same as where it was in the beginning of the month, but new data does come out. Uh, we will analyze that as well. As for the state of Florida, so a new poll from Rasmussen Report shows the Democrat Bill Nelson ahead by 1%. That is very considerable uh, for a couple of reasons. Actually, before I go into Florida, I'm going to characterize the state of West Virginia as a leaning Democratic state because I did fail to do that in the beginning of the video, but still, um, that is the first lean for the Democrats uh, that we've actually characterized and probably the only one in the 2018 Senate map. So the Democrats currently have 48 seats and 49 seats for the GOP. Back to the state of Florida. Like I said, Russ Musson shows Bill Nelson ahead by 1%, but Survey USA shows Scott ahead by two. Quinnipiac has a tie along with Gravis with another tie. Mason Dixon, Dixon shows Scott ahead by 3%. The overall RCP averages Scott plus 1.6%, uh, but this new Russ Musson reports poll is pretty good. Uh, many people do take Rasmussen for the approval rating polls, especially people who do tend to favor the president. Um, like along with the president, he does take Rasmussen as well. Uh, but I'm not too 100% trusting Rasmussen. There's a reason why it's an outlier, and I also think that it could be an outlier for this race itself. Um, I don't use it when citing the approval rating polls, so there's no reason why I should cite it, even though it is one of those few polls that uh, many people do trust, which doesn't agree with their agenda at this point in time. I'm not going to characterize this race as tilting in the Democratic column. I'm actually going to keep Florida in the tilt GOP column until we actually get more data that uh, goes against everything that we've been seeing, because the last time Nelson led before that poll was taken was in early July. So overall, um, the Republicans have officially retained the majority in the United States uh, Senate, but we still have two more races to characterize. So keep in mind the map before should 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans. Let's see where that map ends up right now. Uh, with the state of Arizona, 
A new poll from Fox News co- shows Kirsten Cinema ahead by 3%, but ABC 15 shows McSally ahead by 3%, and Gravis shows McSally ahead by 1%. These were polls all taken after the primaries. The polls taken before the primary, not a single Republican victory in any of these polls. Now that we're looking at the polls after the primaries, the RCP average is McSally plus 0.3%. So before I had characterized this race as a leaning, a tilt Republican state, then a tilt Democratic state, at this point in time, I'm going to keep it in the tilt Democratic column for uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, yes, there was a consistent lead and McSally did bring that down. But Fox News showing the Democrat ahead a little bit more um, trusting of Fo- the Fox poll over Gravis um, for a couple of reasons. And also Fox News wasn't too inaccurate in 2016 where it wasn't too inaccurate in a couple of other polling uh, areas and s- in some primaries. But uh, overall, I'm going to say that this state retains in the Democratic column very narrowly. Uh, even though McSally is leading this RCP average, I really want to see more data come out of this state because with the Democrat leading all the way up until the primaries and the primaries occur, and then now we have one-third of the, uh, I guess, the state itself voting um, in terms of polling. One-third of polling showing cinema ahead, and then the other two-thirds showing the Republican ahead. Even though McSally's leads are not as considerable as cinemas, that's why I want to see more of this data because cinema led by 11 percent eight percent six percent eight percent four percent four percent that's higher than any mcsally leading poll mcsally plus one mcsally plus three and then cinema plus three so the data is very conflicting i really want to go through it before i make a a huge change to the state because it does make a huge change flipping it from red to blue or blue to red um but for right now i'm going to trust my earlier prediction and keep that one in the tilt to democratic column but here's where i will make a change Right now in the state of Tennessee, um, we're going to put this one in the pure toss-up column. I cannot characterize Tennessee at this point in time. Even though I did characterize it as a tilt Democratic state, uh, I guess Marsha Blackburn has pretty much come back. And also, Martha McSally has as well. But Tennessee is a little bit different. Arizona was a swing state in 2016. Tennessee was not. Arizona has an unpopular Republican incumbent. Tennessee does not. Okay, right now, uh, if you look at other polling, the only thing that really uh, relates it to is that the Democrat did lead by considerable amounts before the primaries occurred. After the primaries did occur, the GOP typically comes back because these are two Republican states, but Arizona not so much as Tennessee. Again, there is a popular Democratic incumbent, sorry, former incumbent governor, uh, former governor, I guess, from the state of Tennessee who is pretty popular nationwide, uh, statewide at this point in time, but still, Tennessee, I cannot make an accurate uh, characterization of this race at this point, mainly because the state is a lot different than Arizona. The factors that affect Arizona do not affect Tennessee the same way. So uh, for right now, we're going to keep Tennessee in the pure toss-up column, which finishes off with the Republicans still at the majority with 50 seats and the Democrats at 49, comparing it to the map before with 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.